Hello everybody and welcome back to TJ's Lego Room and today I'm going to do a quick video to show you how to do the drop down cockpit for the TIE Javelin. I apologize for my voice, I am a little under the weather. Uh, luckily it has nothing to do with the current situation in the world today so let's hope it stays that way. Alright, let's jump into it, shall we? Alright, now I did start off by building this uh, little base right here which is the bottom, it's a replica of the bottom of the cockpit. Uh, I have some offset studs, the new triple by two jumper plates to kind of offset it so that the pilot had a clear pathway going up and down, but you can do whatever you like as far as that goes. The important part is right here, the uh, single stud on the back. That single stud on either side is going to connect it to the upper part of our contraption, and that's going to make sure that we can... Uh, attach it on but it's going to be weak enough that when we pop it down it's going to fall so we're going to use these Technic bricks right here with the two holes and we're going to take a couple of those guys and we're just going to stick some pins in one side and visually it's going to be the side that the uh, the single studs are on all right we're going to stick that in there and then we're going to immediately take them back out because I forgot to put the perpendicular connectors on. So we have these perpendicular uh, pin by axle connectors and we're gonna put the pin side on the Technic pins. Ha ha, it's logical, right? Logical, Captain. Put the uh, pins on the pins. We're actually gonna break that rule in about 10 seconds. So then we're gonna take some six long axles and stick those in the axle part like that. Then we're going to take some lift arms that have a pin side and an axle side. We're going to drop the pin side on the axles. Told you we were going to break that rule. And just let them fall right down. We're going to make sure that they're facing uh, towards the back there. Then we have these special uh, five and a half long Technic axles with a stopper. You can see that little line right there. It's a stopper. We're going to put the stopper side down inside there. Then we're gonna do the same thing that we just did. We're gonna break that rule. We're gonna put the pin side on these other two perpendicular connectors right down on. Now in the axle part of those perpendicular connectors, we're gonna put some of these uh, blue Technic pins that are pin sides and axle sides. We're gonna stick the axle sides in the axle receivers on the perpendicular connectors. Whew, hope you're keeping up with this terminology. It's difficult for me. We're going to take one more of those Technic bricks. We're going to go ahead and stick it on those blue pins. Now the last thing we need to do is make sure that this doesn't wiggle nearly as much as that. So we're going to use these uh, half wide uh, Technic lift arms. We're just going to pop those on top. I did change the colors for these. That's mostly so you can see how they interact with each other a little bit easier. Um, I do have repeats of the actual colors I use. I just didn't want to use them because visuals. Uh, I am going to throw a two by two modified tile just between those Technic bricks on the bottom, just to give it a little bit more strength there while we play with it. And once you've got to this point, you're pretty much ready to start uh, releasing or loosening or aligning all the different pieces. So what you want is you want this to kind of free float up and down. You want it to be pretty free. It's a little bit sticky in a couple places. Kind of wiggle it around, make sure it's in a good position until it starts floating pretty free. Now it feels pretty good. Now one thing you might notice is that this can actually tip backwards. If your ship is designed properly so that this actually hits the ground before it reaches the pivot point, you won't have an issue with that like pretty much at all. Uh, to illustrate this, I'm going to go ahead and put this little 1x2 uh, trans red piece right there just for consistency. Um, I did build this little contraption here. It's just one of these uh, big ugly rock pieces. It's like a 4x2 and it's six studs or six bricks tall. And then I just have a uh, mocked up back end of that and this is really just for visuals so you can get an idea and once I put the Technic brick right on top you can see it's pretty close it's actually off by one so you, this can actually tilt just a little bit 
but we're not going to worry about that today. I could throw some boat tiles on there or another plate and it'd be fine, but let's just get going. All right, so if I clip it into those plates right there, you can see it holds it up. And then when I push down on that red piece, boom, drops right down. And that's how we know we got it right. So then we put it back up, clip it right in just with those two studs. And this is where the magic happens. When I push down on this uh, red piece here, if we follow where I'm pushing down, down these rods, it's actually contacting right where those, uh, those single stud connectors are, those uh, single stud pieces that attach into the main ship and provide its connection in. Uh, we're pushing down directly on those and that's why it falls so beautifully is we're actually putting the pressure where it needs to be. We're not trying to do a levered system that goes towards the front or the back. It's it's a direct thing. So, And I think that's one of the reasons why it works so well is because of how direct the pressure is when you're pushing down on it. And so there you go. I got a little sticky there, you can see. It's not always perfect, but look at that. That, that worked like a dream. All right, well, hopefully that uh, taught you guys something and we will catch you guys next time in TJ's Lego Room. Bye.